Need Pokemon Go PvP coaching? Well, I'm on Metify. So click the link in the video description and I'll take you right to my page. What's up guys? Got another exciting video today. This time we have the same core, the Empoleon Frostlass core's last video, but we're gonna do a little bit of team building, turn this into a balanced team. Before we get into what that means, huge shout out to my patron supporters, could not be doing this without you guys. But yeah, let's get right into this video here. Um, so I haven't been able to have that much success in Sinnoh Cup trying new teams, fell a bunch. Um, so I went back to the old core and decided to make this more of an experiment, turning an ABB team into a balanced team. I know I got some comments about people still unsure what ABB teams are. This is not what the PvP poke rankings are. It's just ABB means that you have two Pokemon with shared weakness in the back. In this case, I'm running a balanced team. What this means is that I'm going to stay in against almost every single lead and just lose it or win it but take some sort of advantage out of it. So either get a farm down with Empoleon or Frostlass, take shield advantage with Cresselia, the options are endless. So I haven't made a balanced team in a while, figured it was about time, I guess, to, to rework a team and, and take a look at how a balanced team performs in this meta. So I already talked about Empoleon and Frostlass as far as moveset goes. I feel like these are pretty standard at this point. I would maybe consider Hex and Crunch on Frostlass if you're feeling spicy, because then you can win the mirror but really don't think it's worth it. And then Cresselia, I did try out Future Sight, um, but it it really, I, I used it one time in, in three sets. So I went back to Moonblast, had a lot more luck with that. And then Psycho Cut versus Confusion. I feel like Psycho Cut's a little bit better for this balanced lead version where you're trying to soft lose matchups. Confusion has harder wins and harder losses. So not really the type of move you want on a balanced lead here. Um, but yeah, so name of the game trying to get energy advantage on your two Pokemon that are great against the meta with it There's not too much in this meta besides maybe Bastion that walls frost last With a, with an energy advantage and then same with Empoleon even the fighters if they were to come in or Gastrodon They take huge damage from Hydro counter or drill pick. Let's get into the gameplay Let's take a look how this goes. We have Gastrodon lead. This is a good lead for Cresselia and obviously they swap out into Drapion And this is a bit of a tough one because I know it's likely that it's also a scum tank in the back A lot of people running these double bite teams now these really cheesy fast move teams And I know it's hypocritical for me to say that considering I invented one of the original fast move teams ever but um, That's the narrative so <laughs> Anyways, we have Drapion versus Empoleon I figured this wouldn't really matter what was in the back So I decide to call their bait there. I'm gonna call their bait again on, on Aqua Tail and then I'm gonna go for the Hydra Cannon here. The, the reason I called the bait was because I was like, if there's a Skun Tank in the back, I'm gonna need to get a farm down with this Frostlass to prevent this Skun Tank from just running through the rest of my team. So instead, it looks like they actually quit out, which is honestly a little bit funny to me because I think, yeah, look, it is the Skun Tank. And if this is a Bite Skun Tank, I actually think that this thing could beat the rest of my team with a shield. So this is, I guess, a lesson in don't, quit until you for sure lost because I see a lot of people they just quit when they kind of get down a little bit unless you know you have absolutely zero play left in this game zero play unless you have zero play left in this game and you don't have like and you have all the knowledge of the matchups and stuff like that like you don't want to test some damage like for example I don't know how much damage a moon blast does to Drapion I want to try that out then you probably shouldn't be quitting the game. You should only be quitting the game if there's nothing more to learn from it or if you're completely out of it. All right, next game, we have an Obama Snow lead. Shadow Obama Snow and regular Obama Snow, a little bit different here. With a regular or Shadow Obama Snow, one Moon Blast and a Grass Knot will be enough. Uh, whereas for regular Obama Snow, you need two Moon Blasts, which is a little bit trickier because regular Obama Snow can just get to those two energy balls at the same pace. Or no, I think you're a little bit faster. Uh, but either way, they shield up the Moon Blast, and I'm in a little bit of trouble here. But I'm able to get this Moon Blast off anyways. It's a big deal to get this damage off. And now this is the exact scenario you kind of want to be in with Cresselia. You want to lose lead, but have taken shield advantage and put this Obama Snow within a farm down range of another Pokemon. So I'm going to come in with the Frostlass, obviously, here. And pulling on farming down Obama Snow is a little bit of a disaster. And they don't quite get to the Energy Ball. Most of the time, they will. Sometimes they won't. In this case, we have Shadow Skun Tank. Yeah, like I said, a lot of biters. This team was doing a lot better before the meta shift and just seeing a bunch of these biters. In comes Gastrodon, and you know what? Even with a two shield advantage, because this is a full fast move team, unfortunately, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to pull out this win. Uh, the Hydra Cannon doesn't do quite enough. 
I'm, I'm lucky they did throw their move at least, but I decided not to shield. I probably should have shielded. Um, let them take me down. I'm going to come with Frost Lass and just farm down because I'm going to need all the energy I can get versus this Skun Tank. Unfortunately, it is not a Shadow Skun Tank. This means I'm not going to do the extra 20% damage. And the Skun Tank's going to live and be able to take down my Frost Lass. So even though it was a pretty ideal situation to be in, I ended up losing because of uh, fast food pressure. And that's, that's been the story of Sinnoh Cup for me, unfortunately. Um... Empoleon versus Cresselia. This is a pretty good matchup for Cresselia as well. Um, yeah, they'll switch out most of the time. In this case, they swapped a Driftblim, so I'll come in with uh, Frostlass. If you're fast enough, you can come with Frostlass. This is a decent matchup. I have to shield up. They always ice you in, so it's quite annoying. Make sure you throw with good timing here. If they keep baiting you, they can actually win this in the two shield with, the, with an energy advantage. So uh, we'll see. This time they didn't even build up to it. So that's completely fine. We're obviously going to no shield that. Uh, I know I can't win switch anymore, so it's all about taking shield advantage here. And hopefully shield advantage is enough to help the rest of my team win this game. Yeah, I'm going to come with the Cresselia. I don't want to have to shield anything. If I come with Empoleon, I'm going to have to shield a Shadow Ball. But with Cresselia this way, I can get rid of this energy, which is kind of my advantage versus this Empoleon. But at least I still have that shield remaining. So my Empoleon does have a little bit of... Uh, of leeway at the back. I'm gonna throw Grass Knot here. Two Grass Knots is enough to take out Empoleon. The way this lead normally works is you can either take two shield advantage or they um, will throw Hydro Cannon so you can farm down easily. In this case, I'm gonna catch Hydro Cannon on Empoleon. And when they don't switch out, I realize it might be a little bit of a mistake here. I really thought they might have a fighter in the back or something like that. But instead, it's their own Cresselia. Very similar team we're running here. The only difference is that I had a Frostlass and they had a Drift and somehow they're ahead in this matchup. So this is a, a very tough spot to be in. I don't have a shield anymore. Napoleon's gonna go down here. And yeah, my Crest obviously isn't gonna be able to win this matchup unless two Grass Knots KO. And I don't think two Grass Knots KO here. And even if they did, they're still in Napoleon. This game is likely over. This is one of those where you can probably just leave. If we're talking about it earlier, but. Yep. Oh well, sometimes you lose some games. I don't even think I played that one that poorly. Maybe a little bit faster swap into the, the Drift Limb would have been nice, but. Either way, um, we have Empoleon lead again. In this case. Yeah, so th that's what happened. We played a uh, balance, they played ABB. They win because they play ABB. ABB is good counter to balance teams. For the most part. In this case, we got Empoleon. This is how the lead will normally play out. They'll normally stay in. I'm charging up a little bit more before throwing this Grass Knot. Because I can afford to. I'm counting their moves. And then, if they get greedy and try and farm you down, you definitely get this third Grass Knot off. Which is, this is a fantastic scenario to be in. A one switch and a one shield advantage. So in this case, we're going to let Cresselia go down. Come with the Frost Last. This is the more guaranteed scenario. I can shield both. Of these next moves if i really want to even if they're icy winds everyone always baits on drift blim so honestly you probably are pretty safe no shield in the first one if you have two shields up yeah grab that last shield and then it just seems like they don't really have something else for frost last because they're not swapping out so i'm gonna stay in yeah exactly and we see the lucario here I'm gonna throw the shadow ball swap to empoleon oh no i'm not what am i doing Okay, we'll take the power up punch, get to the avalanche, so we can take out the drift limb later, swap to the Empoleon. Empoleon should be able to take down that Lucario. It takes 50% of its HP, unfortunately, to, to do so. Uh, but luckily, Frostlass already has a move. I'm going to have to take a hex here and going to be able to take out this drift limb with some clever energy management. On to the next game. But yeah, you can see how powerful getting switches with this team right so if they don't want to win switch you get your employee on frost last lined up on the pokemon that you want them to be lined up on which is great but if they go down shields instead we still haven't seen a really good example of that so far i'm only in game number five i believe because the first game i was talking about some other stuff instead um hopefully we'll see this frost last lead this is an example of that we'll see if this game turns out well Cresselia 
not known to have a good match. Oh, this player, this player is the one player who actually played this correctly, unfortunately. They threw Avalanche at Cresselia. This is what you should do in this scenario, just because it takes two moves to take out Cresselia either way. If they throw Shadow Ball, you actually win shield advantage here. So I come with the Empoleon with the intent to farm down. They switch into the Gastrodon. So I'm going to go into the Frost last year. Deal some heavy damage to that Gastrodon. Decide it to shield because if I shield, I can farm down and probably end this matchup with a full move that I can likely get a shield back with either way. Yeah, they come with the Frost last, charge up a little bit. Unfortunately, CMP tie, poor counting on my part, leads to... Actually, I got a refund. I didn't deserve it, but I was a 100 energy anyways. So didn't the refund hardly mattered. And then in comes Empoleon. This is a tough situation to be in. I probably should have just thrown the Avalanche. Yeah, we're just going to get out of there. Yeah, not throwing at that Frost last beforehand really, really hurt. Toxic Crocleat. So this is a good one for Cresselia. I expect them to swap out. In comes Frost last. And you're going to come in with the Empoleon. Uh, eating the Shadow Ball kind of sucks. So I, I debate shielding, but at the end of the day... Yeah, Shadow Ball, I don't know. It's the risk of getting baited, and they outpace. So the more shields you spend, the better this gets for Frostlass, unless you're willing to spend all the shields to farm all the way down. In this case, I decide to let my Empoleon go. It's okay. It's all about energy advantage on this team. So I'm going to come with my Frostlass and try and get a pretty big farm here. We'll shield once. I knew I'd be shielding once anyways. But the goal is to hopefully get so much farm that I can get multiple shields here. In comes Bilbrel, which is exactly what I want to see. They're scared of the farm down, so instead they come in with the Bilbrel and give up switch advantage. This allows my Cresselia to come in and deal some heavy damage to this Bilbrel. Obviously, Grass not super effective. They actually shield too, so I get my shield advantage back. Hyper Fang, quite a bit of damage. But obviously not as much as super effective Grass Knot here. Yeah, I'm going to throw that big Grass Knot. At this point, it's not even really about taking out the Bilbrel. This is fine if they take out my Cresselia. My Cresselia doesn't want to be farmed down by this um, Frostlass anyways. So, get taken down. And you know what? Even more farm for the Frostlass. And this is great. This is great news. Shields down. They bring in the Toxic. I'm 100 energy, so I'm waiting for the Pokemon to come in. I don't throw a Powder Snow. We just throw the Shadow Ball, uh, which will almost take it out. Frostlass comes back in. Shield that up. And that's all she wrote. I decided to try and farm down the Toxic. But I realized, hey, maybe a bit too much health. Let's just throw the Avalanche to be safe. Even though it takes a couple extra seconds there. Yeah, um, yeah. so this just shows what energy can, advantage can do. We still haven't seen a, a soft loss lead yet, but I swear they happen. Okay, Shadow Grottle. This is very interesting. I didn't realize it was Bite until about now, and that's when I realized, hey, I should probably get out of this matchup. But unfortunately, I can't really go on the Frost Last, because Frost Last would deal some, uh, some serious damage, but it would take some serious damage back. And I can't really go into the Empoleon, because Bites are neutral, and... The waterfalls are resisted, so this Pokemon actually beats the whole team. Um, but I'm gonna grab both shields with Cresselia, so this is kind of what you want, although it's a little bit too high HP to farm. I'm gonna come up with the Frost Lass. I decided to no shield this, I believe, because I think it's just a body slam. I don't know what I'm saving my shields for. Generally, if, if they're running a Bite Grottle, they likely have fast move pressure in the back, and we have a Charm Gallade, so this team is incredibly spicy. I decide to not throw my move before them because I want to shield and farm down. Because what else are my shields going to be used for if they're just running Bite and Charm? So I'm going to throw a Drill Peck here at the Scrottle and hopefully whatever they have in the back I can take out with a combination of Empoleon uh, and Frost last before I'm taken out by its fast move pressure. We have Lucario, so as expected another fast move Pokemon, able to take down my Empoleon unfortunately, but Frost last in the back has that Avalanche ready to go. So I think in how many games so far, probably seven or eight, we have not swapped out once of a single lead. And that's how you play balance team normally. If you're not playing it that way, in my opinion, balance team could be made a little bit better. So we got Gastron, in comes Drapion, and this is a bit of a tough, tough situation. Um, Drapion with Bite can beat Empoleon just by shielding, which is what they do. They come back with another move, and I realize if I shield, I can actually farm them down, but someone started a trend of Drapion running Felstinger, and 
Yeah, if they're running Felsinger, you actually don't get to that next move. So this move, this game is essentially over because I got baited. And I know shield again. And they actually Aqua Tail instead of Felstinger, so they don't even have Crunch. And combination of Frost Last. Yeah, there's no, there's no winning this game. It's Double Bite. Double Bite, very tough for this team. Bite lead, very tough for this team. Um, so if you're seeing a lot of Bite, it is tough. You can still win games, but is what it is. Frost Last lead. So let's see if this player plays how the Frost Last lead normally is played out. You're going to throw Grass Knots because you need two moves to KO. You're going to throw Shadow Ball, and this is what you love to see, the Shadow Ball. They throw Avalanche, you're in trouble. They throw Shadow Ball, you're okay. So throw the Grass Knot. They shield once. That's okay. You can throw another Grass Knot here. Because you'll get there before them if they throw Shadow Ball first. And then they're going to farm all the way down. A little bit scary, right? But we did get Shield Advantage. And without these Powder Snows to deal damage to Empoleon in the first place, Empoleon actually survives the Shadow Ball pretty well. They don't actually throw the Shadow Ball, which is great. And they swap into Gastrodon. So this is looking like the classic Gastrodon and Poleon backline here, the double water. Um, decide to throw a move. They don't shield. I'm gonna shield though. I have shield advantage. And it's a water pulse, so Gastrodon, yeah, running water pulse sometimes now too. In comes Frost Last probably. And gonna farm a little bit more, throw this avalanche. Don't want to get into a move and we'll see what's in the back and it is an empoleon so let's see if i played this one a little bit better this time i'll throw the shadow ball which will get shielded i'm gonna come in with my empoleon and i need to be able to beat it to two moves here unfortunately it does have a little bit of an energy advantage so i'm not sure if that will be possible but i get right there and yeah i think that would as was a cmp tie so very, very close game, but my employee is able to take it out. And you know what? That's a learning experience. I just played the exact same team and lost to it. So being able to win shows growth. It's always good. And that's another 3-2. Nothing fancy, but just solid progress with this team. And still haven't switched out of a lead yet. I might here. Actually, I don't know. I think I stay in. Yeah, so Drapion. Bad matchup for Cresselia. Very bad matchup. But, can't really swap because of Frost Last, right? Especially because it's Shadow Drapion. If it's regular Drapion, you can probably swap, but it is a bit risky. You're going to throw this Moon Blast out. Grab a Shield. Which is uh, not too bad of a scenario. We'll see what they want to do. A lot of them bait, and if they bait, they put themselves in a poor position. So that's what you're kind of hoping for a lot of these times. Drapion's baiting because they, they really want to win Switch. You're going to get the Moon Blast off, and getting that Drapion to that HP is... Very important. Get a no shield. They threw that awfully quickly. Crunch going on to Empoleon. That's okay. It does a lot of damage, but I do have a shield advantage and an energy advantage now. Empoleon comes in, and you know what? It's the exact same back line. We've got Cresselia. The only difference is I have a Cresselia and they have a Shadow Drapion. So you'd think that they'd get a huge advantage here. Of course, uh, they bait, but that's okay. I've got an extra shield. This is how you win these mirror matchups is by having an extra shield for the Shadow Ball. They, their only win con was calling the bait there. And gonna just be able to throw this huge Shadow Ball at the Empoleon. They shield up, obviously. And it's all about getting to this final Shadow Ball here. They get greedy and... Well, it's not even a greedy play, it's the correct play. They don't have a chance. They know they don't have a chance unless they're able to farm me down. And actually, I don't even know if this game is over. I'm gonna shield up that Hydro Cannon. And yeah, get to my own. They're pretty close to another one, I think. Maybe I can just, I don't, I don't know. I'm commentating, not counting right now as well. All right. So just goes to show terrible lead, right? And we stayed in and still won. So you don't always have to switch out of these bad leads. It's not that big of a deal. Drapion though, this time going to swap into Frost Last. And unfortunately it's Bite. So make sure to check which type of Drapion it is next time. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, all these Biters, the Biters are like the bane of um of this team's existence unfortunately yeah, at this point you're gonna come in with the empoleon we'll see i decide to actually shield because i'm dumb and get felstinger again i really thought the felstinger was a one-off but people i think are actually legitimately playing felstinger drapion now which is a bit disgusting they come with the galade we're gonna throw four and k 
catch on Cresselia. It's a Leaf Blade, but Leaf Blade still hits Cresselia relatively hard, so this isn't even that good of a uh, catch. I'm gonna throw the Grass Knot to try and force a shield or something out of this Gallade. I'm successfully able to get it. In comes Drift Blim. Bit of a tough scenario here, but I do have a shield and they don't. So I'm gonna throw the Moon Blast. Two Moon Blasts is enough to take out Drift Blim. So I do have to really contemplate whether I want to shield this or not. I actually throw the Shadow Ball. So I'm going to come in with the, the Empoleon and throw the Hydro Cannon right away to take it out before it gets to a move. I want to save the shield for a Leaf Blade that this Gallade might get to. But it looks like... Ooh, very close game. But Empoleon's IV is just good enough to hang on. Fast move down that Gallade. Yeah, those confusions chunk. I guess that just goes to show how squishy both Empoleon and Gallade are in Great League. All right, Shadow Bomb is no lead. Another one of these. We're just going to soft lose this and farm down. So they're going to throw. It's not going to move through, which is good. It means I can likely get to two moves here. I wish they would uh, fix that, of course. Move sneaking shouldn't be a thing. I mean, it should always be a thing. It shouldn't be inconsistent. But either way, going to get to another Moon Blast here. Already grabbed a shield. Would love to grab another. So two shield advantage here is fantastic. This means I won't be able to farm down with Frost Last, but that's okay. The goal here is to just get to that Avalanche, hopefully by spending a shield, and then have this Frost Last with a shield advantage. I can also just no shield it and just hope the Empoleon can carry it, but it is a little bit risky. So I go a little bit above Avalanche because they baited with Weather Ball. And in comes Bastion. I'm going to come with the Empoleon, and it's Gastrodon in the back. This is so unfortunate. Um... Yeah, Sinnoh Cup's been rough. It's tough to play these strategies when there are Pokemon with such polarizing matchups, stuff like Gastrodon and Impolion. It doesn't really matter what shields you have. You shield the Body Slam, Gastrodon takes you down to 1 HP. Impolion well, can't do anything to Bastion at this point, and then Frostlass can't do anything to Bastion either. So, very frustrating that it's kind of dominated, or Sinnoh Cup has been very polarizing in terms of matchups. It feels very RPS. Bye. Yeah, it's a themed cup. It was fun while it lasted. I know some people are having tons of success with their teams, so it does seem like a very team-dependent cup instead of a uh, skill-dependent cup. Not that skill obviously doesn't matter here because it definitely does, uh, but it just seems team comp matters a lot more. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. All right, Grass Knot comes out, and this is kind of how you expect this one to go. They have to throw here. A lot of Empoleon will get greedy, and you'll be able to take a two-shield advantage which is ideal because that energy that they have won't come in so much handy against your own Empoleon. Empoleon is probably one of the best answers to Empoleon in terms of they have lots of energy. So I'm going to soak that up. We have a shield advantage and look, a full Hydro Cannon to take a shield back against something that maybe you wouldn't like to, to eat it. In this case, we have Gastrodon, it looks like, or Mud Boy of some sort, which I think is just Gastrodon in this meta. We have a two shield advantage now, so as long as there's not another Bastion in the back. It looks like we should be okay. So in this case, I throw Avalanche. I probably should have thrown Shadow Ball because I would have been able to KO from this HP. Potentially. And they wouldn't have been able to get this move off, but I don't mind shielding once. It's a Body Slam. And you know what? I don't mind shielding again. This Body Slam is super resisted, but at the same time, I need to keep my Frostlass healthy. They're staying in which means that they're very weak to Frostlass in the back. And it looks like my decision was correct. They're just going to leave right there. I don't even get to see what's in the back, but I assume it's a Frostlass or a Drift Bloom. All right, I'm pulling on lead. We're going to see how this plays out again. See if this player plays it a little bit differently. It's probably one of the more common leads you'll be seeing. Throw the Grass Knot. And they're gonna throw the Hydro Cannon. No need to shield this. It doesn't deal that much damage. Throwing an extra one move and then my Grass Knot for good timing. And then we'll see if I can get to another Grass Knot here. I actually swap. So this means I'm gonna get to a Moon Blast instead. Which is great. I'm gonna swap into my Frost Last to save that Cresselia for a uh, sack later. If if your opponent swaps, it's 99% of the time it's you're in your best interest to also swap unless your Pokemon that they swapped into is like the only Pokemon that can answer it. In this case, I can't afford a shield here. I'm going to let this Weather Ball through. It's not a big deal. It deals more damage than I'd like, but um, at the end of the day, having this extra energy is super nice. Unfortunately, 
have to shield here or risk losing all this energy uh i do go for the avalanche which is a bit of a risky play because i don't think it does quite enough damage but they luckily they swap out afterwards which allows my frost last to get this shadow ball off and then try and catch a move on my empoleon which failed but shadow ball won't ko frost last is almost out of move unfortunately their frost last is out of move as well and it's just a matter of trying to take out this last frost last with the remaining pokemon i have which it's not looking very possible right now i throw the shadow ball because i know i'm not going to make it to another move anyways see if i can farm this empoleon down but unfortunately frost last can't but chrysalia can that's just how bulky this pokemon is resisted psycho cuts taking down an empoleon over a waterfall from similar hp you can win four out of five in that last one and back to veteran yay i know this is really late for veteran guys Sinnoh cup has not been my jam i'm sorry um but i do feel that this team can, can work out i felt like it was a good exercise in turning a abb core into a balanced team i felt like this pretty fun pretty cool stuff hopefully you guys enjoyed that and learned maybe a little bit more about what makes a team abb what makes a team balanced through 15 games i don't think i swapped out of a single lead so was it because my leads were good some of them yeah but I stayed in versus a Shadow Drapion. Oh no, I swapped out of one league in 14 or 15 games. And it ended up being a disaster. I should have stayed in. Because it was by Drapion instead of Poison Sting. Either way, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you uh, liked the video, obviously leave me a like. You can check out my social media, all that stuff in the video description below. So, anyways, thank you so much for watching. And I'll have some Open Great League stuff coming up. Hopefully some Walreen content. We'll see if I can get any success with that.